In this lab I want to look at how to do a screw joint and so in this case I'm just doing the kinematic motion uh, in the assembly environment and so if I drag the the nut the screw turns or if I turn the screw the nut translates. I'll then go to dynamic simulation and in dynamic simulation I will select this to play and we'll see that it rotates and in this case I'm just translating and rotating and then this part is stationary so let's play that again so it's translating one direction and then the other direction why it rotates um, in this particular case then I have set up an input grapher so I'll go to the properties of this and we see that we have one degree of freedom translation and one degree of freedom rotation. I'll go to the rotational degree of freedom and I'm going to select edit and pose motion and I have a velocity set here and I did this with a input grapher and so we'll see how to use the input grapher and so I'm going in one direction uh, in this case minus 720 degrees per second and then if I come over into this segment then I'm going positive 720 degrees per second so let's look at how to set all of this up so I started a new metric part file and standard millimeter IPT and as I go through this I'm going to be converting from an old inch file into now a metric uh, millimeter file so um, we'll see how I make some conversion decisions as I go along. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and I'm going to put this into a folder that I've named screw joint and I'm going to call this trap azoidal screw dash master so we see the name of our file up here at the top of the screen hopefully I spelled that trapezoidal correct I'll start a new sketch on the front plane and I'll do a rectangle and put it above the origin in space about like that then I'll do a coincident constraint between the midpoint of this horizontal line and the origin I'll change this line to a center line. I'll then do dimension and I'm going to dimension the distance from here to here as 50 millimeters. And then I'll dimension the overall length as 250 millimeters. I'm going to finish sketch and then I'll start a new sketch on the XY plane again. And I will project geometry, project this line into my new sketch from sketch number one. I'll then draw a rectangle about like that. And I want to make this rectangle collinear with this construction line. Let's turn off the visibility of sketch number one. So I'll do collinear, this line collinear with that line. And I'll change this line to construction. All right, then I'm going to dimension the distance from the origin to this line and I'll do that distance as 16 millimeters. As I create this thread I'm going to do it as a non-standard size but the idea is you could do it any dimensions. And then I will put a line from the midpoint of this line down to the midpoint of that line and change this one to construction. I'll also do the same thing horizontally. So I'll draw a line from the midpoint here to the midpoint here, change that to construction. I'm going to dimension the length of this construction line as 6.5. I will then dimension the distance from this center line over to the origin, a distance of 45. I want to change part of this rectangle so I'm going to turn on show all constraints and I don't want these two lines to be parallel to each other so I'm going to delete that parallel constraint and I don't want this line and this line to be perpendicular so I'm going to delete that perpendicular constraint. I'll then turn off the visibility of the constraints and now notice that I can drag this and I was expecting this line to stay vertical so I'll put a vertical constraint on this line and then I'll drag this again and I can see that I can change the angle of this trapezoid and let's put an angle dimension on here and I'll do that angle as 29 degrees let's do it as 30 degrees 
I'll finish this sketch and I'm going to turn the visibility of sketch number one back on and I'll drag the end of part marker up to hide sketch number two for a few minutes. I'm then going to do revolve and I'll revolve this cylinder. I'll then go to thicken offset and I want to offset this face and I wanted to offset it though as a surface body. So I'm going to change it from a solid body to a surface body. And I want it to go in the other direction. And I'll do it a distance of 4 millimeters. So I'll go inside a distance of 4 millimeters. We can't see that surface body now. But if I come up here to the solid body folder. And I turn off the visibility of the solid body. So there's our surface body that we put onto the inside. And there's our solid body. I'm going to put a chamfer on this left hand side so I'll do chamfer and I'll select that edge and I'll do five millimeter chamfer on this edge so we can see part of that surface coming out the end of the cylinder. I'll drag my end of part marker down and I'm then going to do coil and I will select the profile is selected for me then I'll select the axis in this case it will be the x-axis and for the pitch I'm going to highlight this number and I'm going to select this 6.5 and I'm going to do times 2 and then for the number of revolutions I want this thing to come all the way off the end let's say 14 revolutions make sure that that comes off the end and I will do cut and we'll say OK to this. Let's temporarily turn off the visibility of the surface so I'll turn off that surface for now and I decided I wanted to make that chamfer a little bit bigger so I'm going to edit that chamfer and let's make that s I'm going to turn on the visibility of sketch number two and then I'm going to do coil again and again I will select the x-axis but this time I want to go in the opposite direction so I'm going to reverse the direction so that it's coming off this way and I'm going to just do one revolution and I want to do that then with a taper angle of 60 degrees and make sure that it is on cut and actually instead of one revolution let's just do half a revolution All right, so we see that now we have a lead out on that thread on that side I'll turn off the visibility of the sketch I'm going to change the color of this part you can change it to whatever color you want I'm going to change mine to yellow I'll save the file I'm then going to start a new sketch on the XY plane and you may want to hit F7 for slice graphics so that we're looking at our part in a section view and I'm going to turn on the visibility of my original sketch and I want to project geometry and I want to get this line I don't want to get the edge of the part here it's more robust if we only use the sketch geometry so I'm going to get that line and I'll temporarily turn off the visibility of the solid part so I'll come up here right click turn off the visibility and I'll also turn off the visibility of sketch number one now I'm going to draw a line from this line but not at the end point not at the midpoint I'll draw a line from about right here over to about right there up to about right here and I meant for that to be vertical so I'll put a vertical constraint on that and then I'll draw a line from here from the end of this line up to about here I'll click and drag an arc I'm holding the mouse button down to click and drag an arc out to about there and then I'll come back down to this point where we started. I want to make this arc tangent to that line. So I'll do tangent, this arc tangent to that line. I will dimension this arc as 25. I will dimension this line as 64. And I will dimension this line as 32. And I'll dimension from this line to the origin and I'll do that distance as 16 and I'll dimension from the center of this arc to the origin do that as 50 and I'll dimension from the center of the arc horizontally back to the origin and I'll do that as 145 our geometry all turns black it's all fully defined I want to change a couple of dimensions let's change this one to 15 and we'll change this one to 65 and we'll change this one to 30 I'll finish the sketch I'll turn on the visibility of the solid body again I'll then do extrude and I'm going to extrude this mid plane a distance of three millimeters I want to reduce the height of this a little bit so I'm going to edit that sketch 3 and I'm going to change this to 15. I like the way that looks and I'll say 
finish sketch on that. I will then mirror this to the other side. So I will do mirror. I will select this feature. I'll get the selection tool for the mirror plane and I'll come over and select the appropriate mirror plane and we'll say okay to that to mirror that to the other side. Let's add a chamfer to this side as well and so I'm going to select both of those ends. I'll do that as five millimeter chamfer on that end. I'll go to the front view and I'll do a new sketch on the XY plane. Again I'll hit F7 for slice graphics and I'm going to draw a rectangle from the projected origin up uh, about like that and then I'll do a second rectangle from this point up to about like like that. I'm going to change this line and this line to a center line type and then I will do dimension and I'm going to dimension the distance from here to the center line and that gives us a diametral dimension and I'll do that as 95. I will then dimension the diametral dimension from here to the center line and I'm going to do that as 190. I'll dimension the distance from here to here as 12 and I'll dimension the distance from here over to here as 100. The sketch all turns dark, it's all fully constrained and then I'm going to do a revolve. Now when I do the revolve I want this to be as a separate solid body. So I'll do revolve and I'll select this rectangle and this rectangle. I'll select this center line as my axis but I want to tell it to do this as a new solid. Make sure you tell it to do it as a new solid. So now I have two solid bodies up here. I'm going to right click on this solid body and I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to change this one to a different color. I'm going to use blue. I'll then turn off the visibility of the first body. Before we do that, let's rename this. So I'm going to name this as screw and then I'll hide the visibility. I'll start a new sketch on the YZ plane and I will draw a circle on the YZ plane and let's make that circle a dimension of 25. I'll then extrude cut and so I want to do a cut and I'll go through all. Now because I only have this part visible it's automatically selecting that solid. If you still had both parts visible you would need to tell it which body you want to actually cut. Then I'm going to do a chamfer on this edge and this edge of 10 millimeters. I'll then turn on the visibility of the original screw again and I, I want to make that chamfer a little bit bigger and so I'm going to edit that chamfer and I want it to be bigger than the screw so let's do 12 millimeters. Still isn't quite bigger, let's do 12.5. So here is our chamfer, here is the edge of the screw. I'll then do combine and it asks me to select the base body. I'm going to select this as the base body and then the tool bodies I'm going to select the screw. I want to do cut but I want to keep the screw. So I'll go to the advanced properties and tell it to keep the tool body. I'll say okay to that. So now we see that we have the thread cut through the second body and if I come up here and I turn on the visibility of the screw, um, there is our screw. I'll go back to the front view. I'll turn off the visibility of the screw again. And I'm going to turn on the visibility of sketch number four. I'll then start a new sketch on the XY plane. And I'm going to project geometry this line and this line. I'll turn off the visibility of sketch four. And you may want to turn on slice graphics, so I'll go to slice graphics and then I'll draw a rectangle from this point up to the midpoint of this line. I'll go back out of slice graphics, so I'll hit F7 again and I will then do extrude. I'll select this rectangle, tell it I want to do cut. I want to come out in this direction, so I'll flip that direction and tell it to go through all. Okay, so we can see inside that screw. I'll turn the visibility of the screw back on and I'm going to rename this part as nut. All right, so we have two solid bodies in 
one part file. I want to push this out as an assembly. So I'll go to the Manage tab and I'm going to select Make Components. I'll select these two components, the screw and the nut, and then I'm going to insert these into a assembly and I'm going to call this assembly just trapezoidal screw. I'm going to backspace over the master. So the master was just my part file. And I'll select my template. So I'll do a metric standard millimeter IAM and then make sure that I'm putting it into the correct location. So I'm putting it into the screw joint folder and I'll select next. And so here are my two uh, files. Now a lot of times we give English names to uh, parts, but we could have lots of different screws, uh, lots of different nuts. So that's probably a poor practice to give it a name like this. Uh, we could change that to a part number here so we could give the component names uh, some part number rather than do it as a as an English name. I'm also going to change this template to a metric template for the parts. If I wanted to scale the parts, I could scale them, or, or a mirrored part, I could go ahead and select mirrored part. In this case, I'll just say OK. All right, so now we're in an assembly file, and any changes that we make to the master file would automatically be updated in our assembly file. So that completes the setup of creating the parts. Next, we'll see how to do the kinematic motion. For the screw, I'm going to right click and unground and now we see that it moves anywhere on the screen. But I want to constrain the axis of the screw to the axis of the assembly. And so I'll do constrain and I'll select the X axis of the assembly and I'll select the X axis of the screw. Now when we move this, we see that it translates and it rotates. I'm then going to do the same thing with the nut. I'm going to right click and unground the nut. I'll expand the origin of the nut and then I'll constrain the x-axis of the nut to the x-axis of the assembly. And then we see that the nut translates and it rotates. Now I don't want the nut to rotate. I only want it to translate. So I'm going to constrain one of the planes on the nut. In this case I will use the XY plane. So I'll constrain the XY plane of the nut and I want to do this flush to the XY plane of the assembly. Okay now when we move the nut we see that it only translates. It doesn't rotate. I'm going to just line this up by eye. Now we could go to more trouble and line it up with the work planes at the home position and then suppress those those constraints but I'll just line it up by eye. I'll then go to constraints and I'm going to do a motion constraint and I want to do rotational translational. For the distance I'm going to set the distance from one point on the thread to the same point on the neck helix and so that distance was 13 millimeters. So I'll put in 13 and I will select for the first selection I'll select this cylindrical face on the screw and then for the second selection I'll select this planar face on the nut and I'll say okay to that. And then I'll drag the screw and I see that I don't get the behavior that I expect. I'll drag the nut and I see that it is rotating the screw but it's going the wrong direction. So I'll right click on this and say edit that feature and I'll flip that direction to reverse. Now when I move the nut the screw is going in the correct direction. If I need to line this back up again, and again I'm just lining it up by eye, I'll temporarily suppress this constraint and I'll drag this over here, line that up by eye, and then unsuppress that constraint. Now when I move this, the screw rotates as the nut translates. But again, if I move the screw, it doesn't operate correctly. Let me undo that. So I need to put a second rotational translational constraint on here. So I'll do constraint again. I'll go to motion. I'll set it on rotation translation. The distance 
13 millimeters and we'll put in reverse. This time I'll select it in the opposite order. So I'll select the cylinder on the nut first and then for the second component I'll select the end of the screw for the translation. So this gives me the rotation, this gives me the translation. And so now if I drag this, the nut rotates the screw or if I drag the screw, rotate it, it translates the nut. So that's the kinematic motion. For the dynamic simulation, I want to assume that we have this part attached to some other portion of a mechanism, and so I want it to be grounded. So I'm going to put it at the home position, and there are several different ways that I could do this. You can come over here and find the constraints and make them in that manner, or we can come up here to the productivity tools, and we'll tell it to ground and root, and I'm going to tell it to put this part at the origin and ground it at the origin, and if I want to, I can also create the flush constraints in case I want to unground this and move an offset or uh, something similar to that. So I'll say okay to that. That moves this nut to the grounded position and I like to put my grounded part up at the top. I'm going to move that up to the top of the browser. So now this grounded part doesn't move. I'll go to dynamic simulation and actually before I do that I may want to put this screw in a home position as well. So I'll go to ground and root and I'll select ground and root and this time I'm going to select the screw but I'm going to just tell it to create origin flush constraints. So now I know that this is perfectly lined up with the nut but I only want those constraints in there as temporary constraints. So I'm going to name those as home position. I'll name that as home position one, suppress this and I'll do the same thing for this one home position 2 and I'll do the same thing for this one. So I named these three constraints, these three flush constraints as home position 1, 2, and 3 and then put a note on here in the name to suppress that. So it's really important that you remember to suppress this before going into dynamic simulation. So anytime I need to get these back to the home position I can just unsuppress it and then resuppress it again. I'll go to dynamic simulation and so we see that our screw is not in the mobile group it's in the grounder group and if I go to a simulation settings it says to automatically convert to constraints so we'll have to go back to the assembly and I'm going to suppress these two rotational translation constraints. And now I go back to dynamic simulation and now we see that there is a cylindrical joint on the screw. Now don't move the screw because we have it all lined up. If you move it you would have to go back to the assembly, unsuppress those home positions and then resuppress those. I'll go to insert joint and I'm going to go to a screw joint and it asks me to select component number one. I will select the uh, nut and again I prefer to select the center point of the nut. So I'm going to select the center point of the nut and it tells me that reference can't be used. So in this case I will have to select the cylinder and then I'm going to go to component number two and I'll select that component and for the pitch we'll do the 13 millimeters and we'll say OK to that. Now if I try to drag this we see that if I rotate clockwise it goes in. If I rotate counterclockwise it comes out of the nut. So I would like to play this automatically. Uh, first I'll make sure that I'm on my dynamic simulation browser. So we have a cylindrical joint. We just added this rolling joint to screw. So here is, is our screw joint. I'm going to right click on this cylindrical joint and I'm going to go to properties. So on this cylindrical joint we have two degrees of freedom. We have a rotational degree of freedom and a translational degree of freedom. I'm going to click on the tab for the rotational degree of freedom and I'm going to select Select this edit and pose motion and then I will select enable and impose motion and I'm going to put in a velocity. Now we could put it in as a constant value but I want this screw to translate in both directions so I'm going to click on the input grapher and at time one second I want this to go negative 720 degrees. So I'll put in the 720 and I'll hit tab. So it's going to go 720 degrees in the negative direction. 
then I want to add a point over here so I'm going to right click on this side and I'll do add point and I need to make sure that this segment is now yellow you can cycle through if I click here I get back over to this sector if I click here I get back to this sector and I want this one to end at two seconds so I'll type in two and I'll hit tab and my graph updates and I want this sector to go positive 720 degrees so it's going to go negative 720 degrees for the first second and then positive 720 degrees in the second. Now it's going to start from this negative going to the positive. I want to smooth out this curve. So I'm going to click back over here in this segment or you can cycle through the sectors like this. And here where it says linear ramp, I'm going to select a harmonic ramp and then I move that motion law over into this sector. So I'll click here to move that and so notice it's smooth that out and then I want to do the second sector the same way so I'll go to the second sector and I'll harmonic motion I'll move that law over so it's, it more gradually starts in that opposite direction I'll go ahead and say okay to this and, and see the behavior notice that we have a pound symbol next to that joint that lets us know that this joint has been edited I'll go ahead and play this so it's going to go one direction and I only went for one second so I need to increase my time so I'll rewind. Now I might want to increase the amount of time that I'm playing this for because remember that rotation was per second. I'm going to go to four seconds on this and I'll play it. So it goes in for one second and then it comes back out and it's going to play for four seconds. So let's rewind that and play it again. So it goes for the the first second and then it reverses for three more seconds. Now it's going to jump back to that because I didn't tell it to go. So if I go back to the properties and I go to the input grapher, it's going to keep on going at 720 degrees per second for whatever length that I play this simulation. So if I put it at 5 seconds now, it'll go in the first direction for 1 second and it'll come in the second direction for 5 seconds and so forth. So that is the screw joint. If we open up the output grapher, and we'll expand this browser and I'll go to the standard joint. So our cylindrical joint has two degrees of freedom, a rotational and a translational degree of freedom. So if I go to position or velocity or acceleration, I'll go to position. So if I uh, graph P1, so that is the rotational degree of freedom. So I can see how many degrees it has rotated. And if I turn on this one, that is the translational we can see how far it moved in millimeters um, in that time period.